But we do. We drink poison. We drink traces of fluorides. We drink traces of heavy metals. They don't put those values on the label, but this is what we drink. The water that we drink is energetically dead. It vibrates very low. And we are what we drink. We are what we eat. We are what we think. If we drink and eat low vibrational stuff, we will vibrate low. Translate it to our behavior. When we are jealous, when we are violent, when we are envy, when we are full of hatred, we vibrate low. And the opposite. If we have love for the whole world, we vibrate high. How do you get those high vibrational ingredients? Well, in the Bosnian Pyramid Tunnels, where we do the archaeological investigation for 14 years now, and where we discovered 1.6 miles of prehistorical tunnels, we discovered five sections with the water. There are the big sections. They are like 200 feet or 500 feet long sections. Well, under, we have... Under- Underground? Under the Pyramid Valley. Natural? Under the Pyramid Valley, yes. Natural springs? Well, I'll tell you about it. This water, we wanted to check if it was surface water, even though surface is like 120 feet above us. During the uh, rains, storms, the level of water never goes up. During the dry time, summertime, one month, no rain, the level of water never drops. So the water has been there for a very, very long time, and this is not a surface water. So we have done conventional analysis, chemical and microbiological. No viruses, no bacteria. pH is excellent, 7.5. When it comes to pH, probably we know from 0 to 14 is the scale. 7 is neutral, and this is what, is, what it is recommended. The water that we drink, usually 6.5 or so, but our blood is not 7. Our blood is from 7.25 to 7.50. And guess what? The Bosnian pyramid water is 7.50 pH. What does that mean? I mean, you mean, you you can inject that water directly to your blood. So, now we can see that, uh, what we did next, we sent samples to uh, one institute in Slovenia. Slovenia, Ljubljana is the capital. The name of the institute is Bion. Bion Institute was using our water, and uh, they were giving it to five Slovenians who were drinking for a week, and they were checking them on the special equipment from Russia called GDV, Gas Discharge Visualization, GDV camera. And the other group was drinking just a regular bottled water from the stores. When you drink bottled water, you know, it does not feed your cells. It, you know, you just drink it and it goes to your body. That's it. But when you drink Bosnian pyramid water, it feeds your cells. It's and marrow deep, deep, right? Bone marrow deep. Like my daughter just died of cancer. With We couldn't get anything to fix her. And had we really thought about it, Finding things to make her more natural, maybe bone healing water, exactly. Heal. So we realized that pyramid energy actually improves the molecular structure of the water. And when we sent samples to the late Dr. Masaru Emoto from Japan five years ago, we find out that this water from the Bosnian pyramids has beautiful hexagonal structure with the crystal-like structure around it. Why hexagonal? Because hexagon is the perfect geometrical shape when it comes to the energy, the strongest. So now well, you me, see that, yes. I want, I'd like to ask a question. I bet a mad wig on the hour here, Dr. Uh, Sam, just to let you take a little break in between here. But I have a question. Have they, uh, uh, has any of the uh, Catholics, uh, put uh, like a statue there, like the Lady of Fatima or Mother Mary or anything for... No, no, these are very recent, Mother Mary. But 
what we did find. Uh, we found the symbols which are part of the most ancient form of writing in Europe. It is called runic writing, runic symbols, or runes. A rune, yeah, R-U-N-E-S, yes. Well, uh, exactly. Uh, we found eight runic symbols on one of the blocks. And we have done the uh, translation. Uh, you probably know that the runic symbols are actually very complex. Uh, comparing to our alphabet, our alphabet is very, very simple. As a matter of fact, our letters in alphabet, A, B, or C, they mean nothing. Letter B means nothing. Only when we put some letters together, we form words, and then they make sense. For example, H, O, M, E, home. Well, home makes sense. You read it from left to right. But runes are very complex. Every symbol has a meaning. Every symbol represents one number. Every well, does it number... really come from Norse, the Norse mythology, or do you go with... Back well, I'll that. tell you about that. I'll tell you about that. No, they are not coming okay. from all. They are coming from Central Europe, where uh, Hungary is today. Every symbol, ah. so every symbol has a meaning. Every symbol is a number. Every number has a meaning. In other words, one symbol is very, very complex. And then when you put symbols one next to each other, they communicate from left to right, but also from right to left, and also huh. the first row with the one below, and also the one below with the upper row. In other words, these are energy symbols. They are very powerful. They are similar to the Mayan symbols. As you probably know, the Mayan symbols were coming in a set of four. So you read them left to right, right to left, up, down, down, up. So. It uh, brings really very complex meaning, so not many people can even, uh, you know, get the trace of the original meaning. So let me make this yeah, short. Sure. Yeah. So out sure. of eight symbols that we discovered, this is the translation, this is the interpretation we got. It goes like this. The gate has been closed. We are at the standstill. We will need to defend ourselves and conquer until the cosmic gate is open again. Whoa. Besides the first one, we got another one, which was pretty much the same, but they brought in other elements, element of the big water, the flood water. So it is possible that because of this flood water, they were not able to leave. Ah. And so you asked me about powerful. the origin of, yeah, you asked me about the origin of the runic symbols. Officially, it is Central Europe, 2,500 years ago. Then it went up to Scandinavia, and then it went to the West, the United Kingdom, 2,000 years back. But these are conventional explanations. Why they are telling us only 2,000 years? Because they are aware that it was so complex that if you start to go back in the past. Their theory of us being primitive five, eight, ten thousand years back, you know, would look ridiculous. Now, some independent researchers claim that the runic symbols are eight thousand years old. Personally, I think they are over twelve thousand years old. Wow. Well, we know we brought them back with uh, hobbits, right? You know that we use them in Tolkien Gateway for, uh, you know, runes. Uh, in the uh, events, you've probably seen some events where people dress up uh, like hobbits in Europe, possibly, the fandom. Call it fandom, where the people go to events and use the uh, surf alphabet writing. Um, anyway, it's just another way to get people interested in ancient cultures, the Tolkien English runes. But I used them, too, in learning how to read tarot cards and <laughs> runes, too. So there's a following that uh, people believe, and it helps to bring people interested in ancient culture. 
So did you say you found these inside the pyramid, or did somebody dig them up? Because we could talk about now, artifacts. Uh, now, I mentioned that those symbols, they were carved on one of the blocks, and this block we discovered in underground tunnels, in the underground tunnels under the Bosnian Valley of the Pyramid. Whoa, so maybe the Nordics were there. Uh, they say they were all over America, the Nor Norwegians, Nordics, and then those yeah. from space as well, because we use a type in space like hieroglyphic, rune, Nordic type of language. Uh, my husband yeah. and I yeah. saw that. Well, of course they are coming. The Vikings are coming from the 10th century on, so it's not big secret that they are coming the to the... dimension, too. <laughs> Yes, to America. You may not be allowed now, to go uh, there. I don't know. Now, I just want to tell you a few more things about the energy of the pyramids. Okay. Last year, we did an experiment. We were using the seeds of beans. So, two bags with the seeds of beans, we left in the tunnels and one on the top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. And we have the third bag that was our control group our control bag. So we did not expose it to anything. So after two weeks of the incubation period, we wanted to see the germanization process, how many seeds will start growing. In the case of the control group, there's the, you know, right from the store, 60% started growing. And this is about right, because we know, you know, if we plant something, not all the seeds will start growing, right? 60%. But the seeds that were exposed to the pyramid energy in the tunnels, on the top of the pyramid, 100%. And then we were watching the growth. Since it was beans, the growth season is from May until the end of August, beginning of September. The seeds that are exposed to the pyramid energy, it would grow two times quicker, richer, healthier. Our conclusion, the pyramid energy improves the molecular structure of the food. Oh, they proved that years ago with Egyptian tombs as well, right? Or really the pyramid power, I guess, is what they used to write books about when I was a little girl in the 60s and 70s, Pyramid Power. Yes, so Pyramid Power is actually this is a good book. There are more good books on, you know, on, on this topic, but there are more experiments. For example, our friend from Russia, his name is Dr. Alexander Golod. Alexander Golod uh, built 16 pyramids in Russia and Ukraine. And uh, when I visited him, he was telling me the story about his biggest pyramid near Moscow. He placed five tons of kitchen salt in the pyramid. And then he signed a contract with the Russian government and he shipped the salt to the Russian prison nearby, which has 6,000 prisoners. He went there and he asked those, uh, you know, department chiefs, he asked them to use the salt during the breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's it, just a little salt. After three months, he went back to the prison, talking to the same uh, department chiefs. He was asking them if there were any changes in prisoners' behavior. The answer he got was amazing. Those chiefs, they were telling him, it is like we have a brand new prisoners. The violence level was reduced to 0%. 0%. Now, imagine this. I mean, uh, it's 6,000 prisoners. They always play with the knives or with the guns, killing each other. 0% violence level. Two years later, when his contract expired, he wanted to renew it, and the government rejected it. It seems that the governments nowadays, they want us to be violent, so they can step in, and they can control us, and they can manipulate us, and they can take our human rights away.
Well, they make money, don't they, off of the uh, prisons? Of course. 